Hello, everybody. Um, I'm here today with my dear friend, Douglas Green. Um, so, hi, Doug. How are you? Pleasure. Douglas Green is a friend of mine. We, kept, we became friends a couple of years ago. We were both doing a, a seminar to get, together, and uh, we connected. We connected. The reason why I thought you might be interested in, in this interesting and, and kind-hearted and amazing human being is because he's doing some very interesting things. He happens to be a therapist like, like myself. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons we also connect. Um, but interestingly, he's doing some, inter some, some, some stuff around helping people at a level that I have not seen uh, done before. Uh, but we'll come to that first. I, I first want you to, to get to, to meet Doug, uh, Douglas. And uh, I'm going to call you Dougie because I always call you Dougie and it feels weird to call you Douglas. Is that okay? Much more Australian. Yes. That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing. Uh, Douglas, Dougie spent five years in Australia. So he's a little bit of an Aussie person now back in, in L.A. Um, Douglas has uh, written a book called The Teachings of Cheryl. Would you, would you mind putting up the, the beautiful picture? Uh, a little bit there. That, that was Cheryl. Cheryl was, tell us a little bit about how this book came about. The Teachings of Cheryl. Cheryl is the dog, right? Cheryl it was my dog. And she was, uh, you know, at first not exceptional except exceptionally destructive she was a horrible puppy uh worst puppy i've ever known and then over the years i began to realize that she was actually teaching me a lot teaching me a lot about life stuff that i wasn't good at and after then after a while other people started to say wow yeah there's something weird about this dog and eventually it became more than that, it became uh, kind of grand. And I'm, I'm having trouble putting it into words in here, but the book puts it into words. But where it stopped being just about, oh, good way to live in the moment, and became more about spirituality, philosophy, uh, the really the view one has towards life and towards the meaning of life. And then even when she eventually passed on, uh, it was the greatest teacher I've ever known about, certainly about the grieving process, but about so many related things and how our loved ones stay with us when they're gone. Yeah. So yeah. all this was there. Um, then I had this weird quirk I've had since I was maybe 10 years old, that even though I don't read that many new books, I will always look at a bestseller list if one's available. What's and just pay attention to it. What's selling? What's what's big? And there was this day. This is about ten years ago. I looked at a bestseller list and, in particular, the nonfiction bestsellers, and thought, you know, I've been looking at these for decades, and uh, there are certain kinds of books that always show up. Uh, a new biography of some famous person or somebody really important politically just wrote a memoir. Okay, those will always be there. But then you get certain fads and there are certain types of books that are popular at certain times. And I thought in the last decade or so, the three things I've noticed are, for lack of a better word, what I would call guru books, uh, The Secret, uh, Eckhart Tolle's books, uh, books that take ancient, timeless wisdom and condense it into a very easily digestible format. Then, books about what one knows at the end of life. So, Tuesdays with Maury. I don't know if that was big in Australia, but the last yeah, lecture. Yeah, I read that one. It's very good. Hmm. Okay, yeah. And largely being uh, 200 to 300 page essays on, I wish I'd spent more time with my family. Yeah. And then... Uh, Animal books, and Marley and Me being the giant by far. But after that, it seemed there was always a book about a cat or a dog on that list. And I thought, oh, isn't that interesting? And at some point later that day, I thought, you know, 
the greatest teacher of timeless wisdom I ever met, particularly about end of life issues, was a dog. Isn't that interesting? Two hours go by. I think, <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I, I really believe that. The Teaching Social should be a bestseller book, to be honest. I think everybody should go out and get a copy, buy it, because um, it's, it's full of wisdom. I remember a particular story, uh, Dougie, in, in which, which you talk about in, uh, in a therapy session where you had a, a dad. I can't remember if it was a son or a daughter. And the dad was particularly resistant to something that was going on in the room and, right. and Cheryl had a reaction. <laughs> would, yeah. would you, I think that's a brilliant story. Would you mind telling us a story? Sure, sure. In, in the last year of her life, I brought her in as a therapy dog. She was not registered or anything, but she was an older dog and she would basically lick people's hands and then go sleep in the corner during the session. And occasionally there'd be something else where her magic would show up, where uh, somebody would be talking and get into a very stuck, painful place. And she would just stretch, get up from the corner of the room, walk over and lay her head down in their lap. And, you know, if I do that, I lose my license. But for them, it was the most validating, wonderful thing. <coughs> Excuse me. So, in this case, uh, a woman's father had left their family when, when she was very young. And it had been a very difficult road for their family after that uh, with, her, with her single mom. And now that she was an adult and a success, suddenly her father's there saying, hey, I want to be your real dad. And of course, half of her is saying, Oh my God, thank God. Everything I've wanted my whole life, I, I can have him again. My dad's back. And another half saying, don't trust him. He's going to do it to you again. Of course. So she's stuck. She's stuck. We're talking about it for weeks on end. And finally, she comes up with a solution. And she says, Dad, I want, I need you to hear a number of things. I need to tell you about what life was like. And you need to hear my feelings. And I don't feel quite safe doing it with just you. But if you would come with me to see Doug, uh, I could do it there. And he said, okay. She brings him in. Sherelle sniffs everybody, licks their hands, curls up in the corner. That's that. Uh, we talk. Very nice man. Um, eventually, it's time. And she pulls out this letter and starts to read it. And of course, starts weeping as she's reading it. It details all the rough things that they went through. And as she's doing this, I can see him, I don't know how well it'll come across on this, stiffen. And his whole posture stiffens, and his face stiffens. And I think, uh-oh, this isn't good. And she finally finishes, and she's just sitting there weeping. And I turn to him and say, is there anything you want to say to her? And he says, well, I'm not sure that I agree with every point you made, but, and he is completely cut off. And she sees this and starts sobbing. That poor thing, it's like yeah. just the, the worst fear. Like, it would have been better if he turned around and screamed at her, or I won't say hit her, but, you know. Yeah. Um, resisting. He was resisting. He was a guy thing. Yeah. And he's not even seeing what she's doing. He's completely inside. And the dog gets up from the corner, stretches out while the man's talking, walks up right in front of the guy and <laughs> goes back to the corner, flops down, goes back to sleep. Of course, he's petting. just like that, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Full on in the face, and then goes back to sleep. So it was scary, and he says, "What was that? What was that about?" And I'm thinking, I think she must have heard something in the next room that we couldn't hear that she was barking at. Oh, okay, okay. 
session ends, it's mediocre, whatever. My client calls me later and I say, how you doing? And she says, I'm okay. I don't think there was anything in the other room. I say, Neither do I. That is so good. As I say, you know, validation is such a big part of our business. And it's so hard to make someone feel truly validated if they've had trouble with it before. And ironically, there's nothing I could have done nearly as good as what that talk did. So she was, uh, Cheryl was not just a good guru, but she was also a very good therapist. <laughs> That's therapist ever. Sorry. So uh, and a therapist assistant too. <laughs> That's pretty. Co-therapist or I was her assistant. I, I get that. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, uh, thank you for that story. That, that's a great story. Love that story. Um,